Welcome back class. I hope everyone is doing well. You may notice that I've uh, ditched the sport coat uh, for this uh, lecture and actually the next lecture also uh, because it is a scorcher here in Memphis, Tennessee. This past week it's been 95, 96, 97 degrees and coming up this uh, coming week it's looking like 97, 98 degrees almost the entire week. So it, it is warm here in Memphis. Uh, it's almost like we are standing in the desert uh, around ancient Egypt. In today's lecture, we're going to be looking at uh, what is uh, uh, behind me with uh, the Great Sphinx. And uh, we'll be looking at the pyramids. We're we'll looking at some of those um, archaeological sites and, and some information about those. We'll be looking at uh, the um, kingdoms, some more of the kingdoms, uh, continuing that look. And also, we're going to be looking at uh, the beginning of some of the pharaohs. And uh, we'll continue that into in next next lecture. Also, we'll be looking at the pharaohs, especially looking at King Tut, a very very well known uh, pharaoh. Uh, but today's PowerPoint not very long. About I think it's about eight eight or nine slides, and um, and then we'll wrap uh, wrap this lecture up here uh, with looking at uh, the beginning of the pharaohs. All right, guys. Today we're going to be looking at our third PowerPoint, uh, Ancient Egypt Part Three. And uh, to begin with, just wanted to give you a quick recap um, about uh, the Old Kingdom because we'll be looking at uh, the rest of the kingdoms for our lecture, uh, for our information for Egypt uh, in this lecture. But uh, the Old Kingdom, if you remember, is a very structured society. There was upper, middle, lower classes that we looked at. Um, death was the focus of Egyptian life. Uh, if you remember, we talked about the Book of the Dead, which was a funeral text uh, for preparing the, uh, the body to go into the next uh, world uh, with uh, spells. They had to cross the River Styx. Uh, so this is um, just some recap. We looked at the uh, mummies and how they mummified uh, the dead and embalm them. We looked at language with the hieroglyphics and Rosetta Stone, which I'm going to make a few more comments on the Rosetta Stone here just in a few minutes. Uh, our understanding of ancient Egypt comes from Rosetta Stone because we were able to then translate a lot of hieroglyphs uh, because of the translation um, from uh, Jean-Francois Champollion. So uh, just a, a quick recap uh, there of the Old Kingdom. And we'll get into the other kingdoms here uh, in a little bit. But uh, the first thing I want to talk about uh, really in today's lecture is, uh, is this uh, archaeological site uh, right there in the center. You see this is obviously in Giza because of the Great Pyramids in the background. But if you look there at the Sphinx uh, near the Great Pyramids, uh, the Sphinx, um, another very iconic uh, image, an um, archaeological find uh, that uh, kind of identifies Egypt also, not as, a, as iconic as the uh, pyramids, uh, but when you, someone says the Sphinx, uh, you pretty much know, well, that's in Egypt. Um, there, there were many uh, Sphinxes. Um, this is not like the only one, but this is the most famous Sphinx, uh, the Great Sphinx of Giza. It is uh, one of the largest and oldest statues in the world. And archaeologists believe that it was carved around 2500 BC and that the head of the Sphinx, most archaeologists believe that that was um, the head of the pharaoh Khafra, which one of the Great Pyramids is for Khafra. Uh, the Great Sphinx faces the sunrise and guards the pyramid tomb, tombs there at uh, the pyramids of Giza. Now this, this Sphinx is, is huge. Uh, it's 241 feet long, 20 feet wide, 66 feet high. Uh, that's like six story building. It's very tall for a statue. Uh, the eyes on the face, just, so just the eyes themselves are six feet tall. So imagine a man standing in front of the just the eyeball of the Sphinx. Uh, the ears are three feet tall. Now the nose, um, they believe, would have been around five feet long, uh, but that has fallen off uh, of the face. Uh, the Great Sphinx of Egypt 
um, it, as you can see there, it lies near the Great Pyramids in the Giza Valley uh, Plateau, and that's about six miles west of Cairo, uh, Egypt today. Uh, it is the largest single sculpted statue in the world uh, carved, from, um, carved from the bedrock of the plateau. The Sphinx is, has the body of a lion and the head of a human. Um, there's a temple uh, actually between the paws of the Sphinx. Now, the origin and uh, the, the purpose of the Sphinx uh, is a mystery. Uh, not exactly sure um, what, what it means, um, but uh, it, it is a puzzle and not sure if it'll ever be uh, resolved. The uh, Sphinx, uh, as you can see there in the picture, has um, other uh, archaeological digs all around it uh, because this was a, um, a very populated area not too far uh, from, uh, from Cairo. Okay, so we're going to continue on our look now at, uh, at the Great Pyramid, so right near the Sphinx. And this is probably the most well-known, or it is the well, most well-known image uh, for uh, Egypt. You think Egypt, you think the pyramids of Giza. Now, these pyramids uh, were built um, by the pharaohs, and uh, the three pharaohs, and Pharaoh Khufu, uh, his reign started around 2551 BC. I believe I mentioned this in another lecture already. Um, his pyramid is 455 feet tall and is known as the Great Pyramid and uh, considered to be one of the wonders of the ancient world. Um, the pyramids were built uh, in the Old Kingdom, so don't think uh, the pyramids were built like around the time of Moses or the Exodus. Those pyramids have, had already been built. Uh, this is the Old Kingdom. And... Uh, there were other pyramids that were built also, but these are the, definitely the most uh, well-known uh, pyramids. The pyramids, they're on the plateau of Giza, which is not very far from Cairo, like I mentioned. But the, the pyramids, they also show, because they were tombs for the pharaohs, they also show how the pharaohs could uh, uh, marshal Egyptian resources for uh, this the, this construction. I mean, this is, these are massive um, building projects, and just the tons of stone uh, that was needed just to build one pyramid, let alone three, and and other uh, pyramids around the area. Uh, but you could you can see how the Egyptian pharaohs could just marshal all the labor and resources for their their own tomb that they would be buried in. Uh, the largest um, is Ku for Khufu, and it involves, um, here, here's some statistics. The cut, precise cutting and fitting of 2.3 million limestone blocks, and they weighed up to 15 tons each. The, uh, some of them were 15 tons. Uh, the average, let me rephrase that, the average weight of, their, of a block was 2.5 tons. I mean, that's heavy enough. But some of them weighed up to 15 tons. Uh, construction of the pyramids, it's estimated that 84,000 workers worked 80, de 80 days in the year. And they did this for 20 years to build one pyramid. And the reason they worked 80 days in the year was that uh, the uh, other days of the year, most of them would have been involved in harvesting uh, crops or farming uh, crops. It's, um, it's not believed that slaves built the pyramids. You, you may have heard of that or saw that in a movie or, or uh, some other, something else that you read. Uh, but uh, really, slaves um, were not used for uh, building the pyramids. It was actually for, uh, created by skilled craftsmen. Uh, built uh, these pyramids and so they weren't slaves working year-round you know long hours every day uh, to build these pyramids it was uh, about 84,000 workers 80 days a year for 20 years and they built the tombs for uh, for the um, three pharaohs the other ones um, were built for the uh, 
uh, Pharaoh's Coffrey and Mancure. So uh, just a look here again at the pyramids. There's also going to be a video uh, for session three about the construction of the pyramids. All right, the capital in the Old Kingdom was uh, Memphis, and then we move into a decline of the Old Kingdom. Uh, the pharaoh's spending depleted the treasury. Uh, there was time of drought, so which means that there was no flooding of the Nile Valley, which means no crops, which means famine. So the Old Kingdom declined. Um, increased trade led to the nobles and priests to grow in wealth and power, which led to uh, civil wars and other uh, other problems. Uh, and we see the old kingdom ends with the Hyksos invasion. These were peoples that uh, came from the north um, and invaded, and they basically defeated the Egyptians because they used chariots and bronze weapons when. The Egyptians had wooden weapons, they used stone weapons, and they traveled on their feet. Uh, they didn't really have chariots. Uh, the Hyksos actually introduced chariots to uh, the Egyptians. Uh, and the Hyksos uh, uh, lasted about uh, 200 years. Okay, so the New Kingdom... Okay, that's it for the PowerPoint. Um, I thought I had uh, a middle kingdom. Let me uh, just give some notes. I don't have a PowerPoint slide for it. Let me just give some notes on middle kingdom. Okay, so between old kingdom and new kingdom, we have middle kingdom. Uh, the middle kingdom, uh, really the only thing you need to just kind of make note of is uh, that there was uh, Pharaoh, and his name was... Mentu Hotep the second. Uh, just do the best you can on spelling. Um, but he uh, he basically defeats the Hyksos and he uh, controlled the whole country and he based his uh, headquarters out of Thebes, Egypt. And uh, there's a lot of monuments, uh, but in in Thebes, but uh, not very many are uh, dedicated to uh, Mentahotep. So uh, one of the things that he is known for is uh, he was the first to, to um, try to colonize Nubia and, and get the resources from Nubia, which is uh, south of Egypt, uh, so he could get the ivory and the ebony and the the leopard skins and animal skins and ostrich plumes and just different different things of luxury uh, that the pharaohs would have uh, so that's uh, that's the middle kingdom so we're going to continue now uh, with the the new kingdom uh, the new kingdom has a couple of characteristics that we need to look at. Um, the empire for Pharaoh, um, it, it expanded. Uh, the pharaoh ex pharaohs extended their boundaries to help uh, ward off any kind of future invasions. And so because there was a time of uh, where they didn't have all these invasions or, or problems from outside, uh, they were able to prosper and become a very productive society. So one important note for that you should know is that the New Kingdom was the most prosperous and productive society of ancient Egypt. So the empire kind of expanded, uh, the armies, uh, the army grew um, and extended out in the empire to protect the country. And uh, the results of the military expanding out was uh, that uh, tribute came in, that's money, like kind of like taxes, tribute came in, wealth came in, gold coming into Egypt because they expanded out. Um, so the military helped with that. And then the wealth that came in, um, special skills were developed like scribes, uh, the, the, the skill of uh, writing uh, records, trading, maritime trading, 
and with this came social mobility. Uh, the class system in Egypt was very strict, so very few could move up in class, uh, but there were some that could. Uh, if a farmer was able to learn how to read and write, they could move up into uh, the higher class. Uh, if they could learn a trade, they could move from farming to a trade. Uh, but it was very rare that any, anyone would move from a low class up to, let's say, nobility. So yeah, even though there was some social mobility, it was still uh, very strict. The New Kingdom uh, provided uh, the bulk of art and artifacts and architecture. Um, except for the pyramids and some of the architect architecture and archaeological finds around the Great Pyramids of Giza, um, most of the art and artifacts and architecture and temples and monuments uh, came from the New Kingdom uh, time period. Pharaohs of the New Kingdom, um, they're the ones that created uh, temples uh, on the other side of the Nile, which is quite quite a distance from the pyramids of Giza, uh, so you have to go south in Egypt uh, a good ways down the the Nile. But the Valley of the Tombs is uh, is there, and the Valley of the Tombs of the Kings is a burial place for uh, pharaohs and um, other nobility. It was a place that they went to uh, to be buried. So they're not all buried right there, but let's say by Cairo and Giza. This is uh, uh, quite a distance away, uh, the Valley of the Tombs of Kings. Pharaohs of the New Kingdom uh, didn't really build pyramids. Uh, that time had passed, but they did build countless temples and palaces and monuments to advertise their power and their authority. All right, so some of the um, pharaohs. As you see on the slide, you have uh, uh, Amose. Amose, uh, he was uh, one that um, kicked out the Hyksos, started um, starting the new kingdom. He was one that did s some uh, pretty serious uh, um, extension into Nubia to bring in uh, a lot of gold uh, into Egypt. And uh, during his reign, he completed the conquest, uh, completely expelling the Hyksos from the Delta region, which is at the very, very uh, top of Egypt. And he reasserted Egyptian uh, power. Uh, he... Uh, Insert, asserted his power in Nubia, like I said. He also asserted his power into Canaan, uh, which is up towards where Israel is. Um, he organized the country, uh, administered the country. He opened quarries. He opened up mines, trade routes, massive construction projects uh, that hadn't been seen for a long time, again, to build temples. Uh, the building program culminated in... Um, what uh, is basically one of the last um, pyramids to ever be built. Uh, the, the time was not known for building pyramids, uh, but he did construct one of the last pyr uh, pyramids uh, before um, the New Kingdom really took off uh, because he was the, basically the one that founded the New Kingdom. He laid the foundation uh, for the New Kingdom. So under uh, Egyptian power here, this is where it reached its peak um, here in the New Kingdom. All right, and uh, the next pharaoh here that we're going to look at is uh, uh, Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut. Again, I'm doing the best I can in saying these names. But... Uh, this is um, a lady uh, pharaoh, and uh, her father was Thutmosis the first, and he died, and she married her half brother Thutmosis the second, and became queen of Egypt when she married him. Now she was around the age of twelve uh, when um, she married him. 
Uh, but then he died, and so she was in charge of her son, uh, who actually is the pharaoh. Uh, so, and this is uh, Thutmose, Moses the third is pharaoh, but she's in charge, and she was looked at as uh, as the pharaoh. Um, she grabs uh, power for twenty years and and built uh, many monuments uh, to herself. Uh, she was only the, the third woman to become pharaoh in 3,000 years of Egyptian history. And she was the first to attain full power of the position. So Hatshepsut, the woman uh, pharaoh, she extended uh, Egyptian trade. She um, saw these ambitious uh, building projects. Uh, one most notably is the Temple of Deir el Bari, uh, which you don't need to know that, but it's just uh, a temple uh, that she built in um, western Thebes, and this is where she was buried. So that's why uh, why we know this. Okay, so that's it uh, for today' uh, class in regards to the PowerPoint. We looked at uh, ancient Egypt part three. Uh, we had some recap. We looked at the Sphinx, the pyramids. We looked at uh, the kingdoms and uh, two here of the pharaohs. And uh, next time we're going to continue on uh, with a look at some more of the pharaohs. All right, class, that's good for today. I hope everyone enjoyed that uh, that riveting PowerPoint. Uh, like I said, there, there in the previous video, there are many uh, many pharaohs, dynasties, a lot of dynasties, a lot of pharaohs. And so um, we're not going to obviously look at all of them. We're going to look at the uh, just a couple of the main ones uh, that we will be um, looking at in a little bit more detail. So next lecture, we're going to continue into the study of pharaoh, the pharaohs, uh, especially King Tut. And then we're going to basically wrap up our our study on uh, on ancient Egypt. So the plan is uh, today uh, is a lecture. Uh, tomorrow will be another lecture. And then, uh, so that would be Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday, if you're following the, um, the calendar on the syllabus, uh, Thursday will, will be um, basically just watch two videos uh, that I'll have links uh, to uh, there in Moodle. And just go ahead and watch those videos. Uh, I think it's like 26 minute video and then like a five minute video. So just go ahead and watch those and, uh, and that'll be it uh, for, uh, for ancient Egypt and we'll move into our next civilization. Uh, but for now, we'll see you next time. Take care.